Hey guys, it's Jen from I Create Crafts. With Valentine's Day quickly approaching, I thought I would create a quick video showing you how to create some Valentine's coloring cards using your Cricut machine. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, I'm starting in Design Space. I'm going to go to Upload here in the corner because this is where I have all my uploads and I already uploaded this one. Um, I'm going to show you really quick. I purchased these off of Etsy and Design Space and to be honest with you, I'm not happy with any of them and I'll tell you why in a minute. So I'm going to select the one that I'm going to work with now. So I clicked on this one. I'm going to go Add to Canvas and it's going to bring it up on my screen and it's going to be really large when you first put it in here um, because you need to resize it. But I'm going to show you something really quick. So if I bring this over, I can show you guys um, where I purchased it from. So I got this one from Design Bundles. It is on sale right now for $2. So go ahead and go grab it now. It's what you get here. The reason I love this one so much more than the other ones that I was just showing you is because this is an actual print then cut. I don't have to do anything with this. So I'm going to get rid of that. And what I mean with that is this is already all done. The only thing you have to do is resize this. And the person that did this said you can do like a uh, the width six and then it will change the height for me. But I figured out that I can do it uh, to fill the rest of my paper. I do about six by six. So I'm going to go up here to the size and I'm going to go to the width and I'm going to type in 6.6 .6, and I'm going to push enter. And I did not unlock it because then it will skew everything and you have to figure out what the height is. If you leave it locked, it will automatically automatically figure that out for you. So if you do a 6.7, it'll come over here and I'll have a little triangle saying it's too large. I'll show you what I mean. So if I change this to a 6.7, you get this little triangle right here. So it's telling you it's a little bit too big for your paper. So that's how I found it. 6.6 .6 works perfectly for this. Like I said, this is the easiest, simplest way if you want to find them like this. I will leave the link down below to where I purchased this from. Like I said, it's $2. You do get two images here and I love it because that's all I had to do. So this is going to be a really quick and easy video tutorial for you guys. Um, so that's it. Just change the size. You can change the color if you want. Um, but the purpose of this is for the kids to color. So I just leave it the black and white. I'm going to go up to make it. And then again, if you're not familiar with print and cut, it's going to look like this. It's going to say print and cut. I didn't have to do anything to this one. I'm not mirroring it. I'm not doing anything to this. I wanted to make sure I get the full size of the paper on here. If I did it the six by whatever it was, it would have been a little bit smaller. So now I'm getting the full um, piece of the paper here. I'm going to go to continue because there's nothing I had to do there. And then here it is, send to printer right here. So I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to set up my camera and show you guys what uh, printer I use. I actually just purchased it a little while ago and I absolutely love it. I've never really done print and cut, so I'm really excited about this one. So I'm going to show you what it looks like here on screen. I just hit... Um, print and one thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you get rid of this ad bleed. This is always on and if you have it on it's going to make it look very thick and very dark and you're going to waste a lot of ink on it. So get rid of the ad bleed and then make sure that you change your printer if you need to. I actually do have three printers here. I have a regular Canon that just prints out black and white. I have my sublimination printer that my husband bought me for Christmas. Very excited about it. Um, I will do a few videos on the uh, sublimination too but here it is here the Epson uh, Eco tank 8500 series i'll show you what it looks like but i absolutely love it so that's all i had to do over here make sure that you're putting in the cardstock paper you don't want regular flimsy paper with this because it will not hold your crayons in place you want a thick paper um, i'll leave a link down below in case you're interested in, in amazon i buy a lot of stuff a lot of my things on amazon or if it's on sale i go to joanne fabrics but i live in the country i don't have a lot of stores around me so it's just quicker for me to purchase it on amazon so this is it with this screen. I'm going to wait to push print because I want to get my camera set up over there and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like and all that. Um, so give me a second. I'm going to put my camera up and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I'm set up over here on my table. I have an EcoTank 8500 all-in-one super tank printer. I use the ink that goes in with this so there's nothing um, different that you have to do with this one. 
If you look over here, I'm going to move my camera. You see this black one. Please don't mind the mess behind there. I'm selling all that stuff. This one is actually another Epson. That one is a 2720 that I actually um, changed into a sublimination printer. So it comes with the same ink that you get with this one, the Eco Tank, which is nice because now I get to use the, the ink with this in here. I'll actually show you really quick. So it looks like this. Sorry, it's in a bag. I can show you really quick. So it just says the Epson. It tells you what color it is and all that. It comes exactly like this with this printer. So now I have double for this one. If you're going to use one for sublimination, you need to make sure that you get the correct ink for that. Do not. So once you have this set up for regular printing, you cannot change it into a sublimination printer. Please be careful with that. I will be talking more about sublimination printers in a different video, but I just wanted to show you really quick. So I have that one as well. That is um, a sublimination printer, which I absolutely love. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch more uh, videos on that, but I wanted to show you with this really quick. I love this one. Like I said, it's the 8500. Um, very easy to do. You want to make sure that you change your paper in it. So it comes with the bottom is where the paper is. So you just pull this out and you take out your regular paper that's in here because like I said, you need to use a thick cardstock. So I have some thick cardstock that I bought. Um, I can try to find the package and show you what it is, but it's a lot thicker than regular paper is what you want, especially because you're going to be put, putting crayons into it. So I'm going to put it in the bottom shelf here and just close this. And then I'm going to go back to my uh, computer really quick. I'm going to push print and then I'll show you what it looks like. So I really love this one. I don't know if you can see, but it's automatically pulling this bottom um, printer part out for me which is so cool. I absolutely love this printer. So if you do not have one, I highly, highly recommend this one. Again, it's the Epson 8500. So here it is here. Be careful that you don't touch it as much um, so you don't smear the ink at all. But I want to show you what it looks like. So it has a border on it, as you saw on Cricut. If you're wondering what that's for and you've never done print and cut, I just learned how to do print and cut, is that is telling Cricut where the border is and how to cut it. So you're going to see that, and once you put it on your Cricut machine, or on your mat rather, and then send it to your uh, Cricut machine, it's going to do a whole bunch of weird sounds and kind of collaborate itself. Um, so I'm going to show you that next, but I want to show you this really quick, how it's going to turn out. So it's going to look like this. Make sure you tune your, turn your bleed off um, with doing this, because it'll make it really thick and not look good. So I'm going to go ahead, switch my camera, and send you back to my Cricut machine. So stay tuned, guys. Sorry, guys, for all the jumping around, but I wanted to show you again at the computer, um, before you can do your Cricut, you have to come back here and do your set your base material. Because this is thicker paper, I normally go for, go for the cardstock here, the heavy cardstock, 100 pounds. It depends what kind of cardstock you're using, so please pay attention to that. I also use this cardstock for intricate cuts as well, but this is the one that I always seem to go to. So I'm going to click on this one, and then sometimes I do better when I go to the default here and I just push more. So I have it at heavy cardstock, and then I have the pressure at more. I have a brand new blade put in here already, and then it's just going to cut you see the border here. I'll show you really quick. You see the border. Um, so it's going to cut around that. So I'm going to show you uh, at the Cricut how it's going to look and how to do it. So all I'm doing is putting my paper on a green mat and then flattening down with my hand. I don't want it on there too tight where I can't rip it back up. So I'm going to set up the camera and show you the next step. I'm sorry guys for all this uh, moving around on here. Hope you're not getting sick, but I want to show you each step-by-step -step process. So I do have it on my green mat already and I just flattened it with my hand. So all I'm going to do is put it in the machine. The uh, arrow is flashing and ready for, to tell me it's all ready to go. So I just push that and then I'm going to push to see once that starts um, telling me it's time to cut. So there it is there and I'm going to be quiet for a minute and show you what it's going to do. So it's going to try to find it's going to have a light on here and it's going to try to find these little lines to um, figure out where the cuts are. So I'm going to be quiet once I start this and then you'll kind of hear it. So if you hear it, your machine's not doing anything wrong. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So in a second, you're going to see a light come on. There it is. And then it's just going to follow the lines here and make sure that it's all set up correctly. Again, all it's doing is reading the lines, making sure that it's all on there properly. If you do have an issue, you, your computer will come back up until you have to redo something again. But then the next thing it's gonna do is cut it out 
and then it's gonna make the little score lines in and everything for you as well so I'm gonna let this finish up and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all done okay so now it's finished you'll see the little light flashing here I'm gonna push it I'm gonna show you really quick what this looks like so I'm gonna peel it off and show you how awesome this turns out so be very careful peeling this up you don't want to make a dent in it or anything so you carefully want to peel it up and it's going to leave some pieces on your board which you can easily take off later but here it is here isn't that cute so what it does with the Cricut machine is not only does it cut out the holes here needed to put in the crayons it also has a little edge here that you can fold this over and make it into a card which I'm not going to do yet so the next thing is I'm just going to put a couple of crayons in here show you guys what it looks like but isn't that really cute so the little kids can just color it in however they want. They write their name to and from on there. I think that is really cute. So there's the back. You can kind of see the line a little bit better here. Um, but I was able to get two of these off of each page. So I'm going to show you the other one really quick again. So unfortunately you're going to have a little bit of paper on your mat yet but you just want to take your scraper and just pull it off so we just easily pull up on here and then there is what it looks like as well so these are just darling i absolutely love these i'm gonna have to find someone um for boys maybe they might have a different one this is a dinosaur one though and then this is also a gnome one so that could be for a boy and a girl but i think that's really cute so i'm gonna finish this up put a few crayons in it show you guys what it looks All like right, so to finish these up i just put a few crayons in here and i love how this works because they do do actually stay in place really really nice so I'm just going to show you really quick how I did it uh, self-explanatory but basically all you do is push these little holes upwards towards you and then you can easily put your crayons in there and then the crayons I'm using I just bought from the dollar store it's nothing fancy not the Crayola kind um, so I'm just taking you know random colors and just putting it in here but I think this is the cutest Valentine's thing you can personalize it any other way you know have you can go ahead and write their name in it for them or you know have the kids go ahead and write it in there so I'm just taking random colors putting it in here and I think this is the cutest Valentine's card I would love to receive any of these at my uh, at a young age um, so I'm just putting a few in here we'll just pick one more color just like that but I mean these can go a really long way I think that would be really awesome to get you know this instead of you know a piece of candy or something maybe not as a kid but I think that would be a lot of fun so again I hope you guys like this tutorial give me a thumbs up here they both are I think they turn out absolutely amazing I love them I'm going to be creating some more I'm actually going to try selling these at the store I'm at and then on local Facebook marketplace I'll let you guys know how it goes but do you like this video give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and happy Valentine's Day everyone